Hey everyone, let's talk about topic 8.2, which is uh, vapor pressure. We're going to start off with a quick demo. Um, and as I am talking about the demo, I want you to go ahead and record any observations. So what you see on my slide right now is a paper towel, and then we have two um, beakers. One of them has water, and the other one has rubbing alcohol. So the one on the left is water, and the one on the right is uh, your rubbing alcohol. So we're going to go ahead and pour both of them on this paper towel, and we are basically just um, examining which one is going to uh, evaporate first. So go ahead and in your mind, uh, make a quick prediction. Which one do you think is going to evaporate first? So I hope all of you said alcohol because um, rubbing alcohol or any type of alcohol in general evaporates much faster than water. If you're recording this in your notes, you can just say that your demo was uh, putting some drops of rubbing alcohol and water on a paper towel at the same temperature because both of them were at the room temperature. And then um, we noticed that rubbing alcohol evaporated faster. So the aim for this lesson is going to be why do different substances which are at the same temperature evaporate at different rates like we noticed in this demo. So we want to think about why did this happen? And the first thing that we want to consider as we are trying to understand this um, is compare um, or just, yeah, comparing contrast evaporation and boiling. Um, so make sure that you're copying this down in your notes. The first thing to keep in mind is that both evaporation and boiling they represent the same phase change. And that phase change is vaporization, where we have a liquid that is converting into gas. But so that's a similarity between the two things. But the difference is evaporation is something that can occur at any temperature, but boiling occurs at very specific temperature. Any substance that we know of has a very specific boiling point because that is the temperature that the substance needs to have in order to start converting from the liquid phase to the gas phase. But evaporation can occur at multiple temperatures. It doesn't have to be that specific temperature. Um, and another difference is that evaporation, for the most part, only occurs at the surface. So the particles that we have on the surface of our substance are the ones that are converting into gas and evaporating. But boiling is something that occurs throughout the substance. So if you have water in a pan and you start boiling that, you will see the bubbles even at the bottom of the pan. And that's because you have that phase change going on everywhere in your substance, not just at the surface. Then let's think about how the substances evaporate. So the two questions that we are thinking about here, first one is, um, if we uh, you spill some water on your desk, would you expect the water to be there uh, the next day? Um, so think about it for a second. Think about why or why not? So I hope everyone said no, um, and that's because on the desk, there's a lot of surface area. So when, when there's more surface area, there is going to be more evaporation because evaporation only occurs at the surface. Um, there's most likely going to be a very um, thin layer of your water on the desk because uh, water d does spread when it is on the desk. Um, so it, it is very likely that all of that water is going to evaporate by the next day. But now think about this. If you leave your water bottle in your car overnight, when you go to your car the next day, would you expect the water to still be present in that bottle? Why or why not? So hopefully you said yes, your water is still going to be in that bottle. And that's because your bottle is a closed system. Remember this from one of the labs that we did? Um, so in that closed system, we cannot claim that there was no evaporation. Maybe there was still evaporation. Um, so the particles that were on the surface of the water in that bottle did evaporate, but because it was a closed system, all of those particles, when they were evaporated um, and became vapors, they were um, at, just collected at the top of your water bottle and, bottle, and then eventually they condensed back. Um, so they, there are two phase changes that are happening here. First, your uh, those particles at the surface are converting from the liquid phase to the gas phase, and then they are converting from the gas phase back 
to the liquid phase. So the end result is you still have that water in the bottle. The reason why this is important for this lesson is because we are talking about vapor pressure in this lesson, which is basically the pressure of a vapor above the liquid, the surface of the liquid, um, which is at equilibrium. Um, so vapor pressure basically tells us how much does a substance want to be a gas. So it, when we say that something has a very high vapor pressure at a specific or at any given temperature, that means that at this temperature, this thing, this substance really wants to be a gas, which means there are very high chances that this thing is going to convert into the gas phase. Um, but then remember, um, the intermolecular forces. So we said that liquids have a much higher or they have more or stronger intermolecular forces compared to gases. So when we have our, a liquid converting into the gas, it's not going to have a lower intermolecular force. So there is that indirect relationship between vapor pressure and intermolecular forces. The higher the vapor pressure, the weaker the intermolecular forces are going to be. So now we have a super, super, super important question in this lesson, and that is, what must be true in order for something to boil? And to answer this, we need two pieces of information. The first is your vapor pressure that we just learned, which is the pressure of the vapor above the surface of a liquid. And the second thing that we need to know is your atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is just the pressure that the atmosphere is exerting on your liquid. So if we go ahead and draw that, it's going to look something like this. So you have your liquid with that represented by that green um, line uh, or the squiggly line. And then above your liquid, you have some vapors. And the pressure that those vapors are exerting on your liquid is what we measure as your vapor pressure. But then your atmospheric pressure is represented by that piston, um, which is basically just the pressure from the atmosphere. So the question is, what must be true about these two things in order for boiling to occur? And what you need to remember is that boiling does not start until your vapor pressure is at least equal to, um, or in the ideal situation, your vapor pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. So if your vapor pressure is still lower than the atmospheric pressure, which means there is more pressure that is um, exerted on your liquid from the atmosphere compared to the vapors. That means your liquid will not start boiling yet. Um, so then we keep on increasing the temperature. Um, that way we keep on getting more and more vapors above the surface of the liquid. And when you have a lot of vapors, your vapor pressure increases. Um, and when that vapor pressure becomes more than the atmospheric pressure, that is when boiling occurs throughout the surface of your liquid. And then we also have something that we refer to as the standard pressure. So go ahead and open up table H in your reference table packet. And then on table H, try to identify the pressure that we refer to as the standard pressure. And think about why do we call that specific temperature, uh, sorry, pressure your standard pressure. So here's your table H um, from your reference table packet. And standard pressure is basically the pressure that represents the normal boiling point of your substances. For example, the normal boiling point of water we know is 100 degrees Celsius. So if you look at water at 100 degrees Celsius, the normal or the standard pressure that is uh, represented over here, or the, the point where your 100 degrees Celsius uh, line crosses your line for water is 101.3 kilopascals. And that is what we refer to as the standard pressure. So standard pressure is the pressure um, at which any liquid or any substance um, boils normally. So um, let's talk about table H a little bit more. And now we are going to compare the vapor pressure of water and propanol at 65 degrees Celsius. Um, you might also want to think about their structure to figure out why do we see that difference in the vapor pressure between the two things.
So we're looking at table eight again, and go ahead and read the vapor pressure for water and propanon at 65 degrees Celsius. So this is what I notice as of this moment. Um, so I see that for water, um, we have the vapor pressure is 23 kilopascal at 65 degrees Celsius, and then for propanon, it's 133 kilopascal. And then we can go ahead and draw the, the structures for propanon and water. Propanon is kind of new for all of us, but we can just go ahead and copy the structure from my slide. Um, now, both of them are polar molecules. However, um, something that you want to keep in mind is that water has that bond between hydrogen and oxygen. So that means uh, it's going to have hydrogen bonding. Comparatively, propanon is only going to have dipole-dipole attraction. So remember, hydrogen bonding is much stronger compared to dipole-dipole interactions. So what do we notice here? Because water has stronger intermolecular forces, it, that kind of explains why the vapor pressure of water is much lower. Um, so if we have weaker intermolecular forces, then your vapor pressure is going to be uh, very high uh, because there is there is that indirect relationship between vapor pressure and intramolecular forces. So what, what does that mean when we say that something has a very high vapor pressure? That means that this thing is, it really, really wants to be a gas. So propanon, because it has weaker intermolecular forces, it's very easy for propanon to become a gas. So propanon is more likely to become a gas, um, which is why it's going to be start boiling at a much lower temperature compared to water. Um, water has very strong intermolecular forces. It's going to take a longer time to boil and become a gas. But the last thing that we want to talk about in terms of table H is the relationship between vapor pressure and temperature. Um, before we do that, let's very quickly talk about what is temperature. So temperature is defined as the measure of average kinetic energy. And remember, kinetic energy comes from the movement. So if something has a very high temperature, then that means this thing has a very high uh, average kinetic energy, which means the particles are moving very, very fast. So what is the relationship that you notice here between vapor pressure and temperature? As you see, the, all of the curves are going upward that indicates the direct relationship between your vapor pressure and temperature, which means as temperature increases, vapor pressure also increases. Um, so what does that mean in, in simpler words? It means that because temperature is defined as your average kinetic energy and the movement, when temperature is increasing, the speed of molecules is also increasing. The molecules are now moving very, very fast. And that is the basic difference between the different phases of matter. In liquids, um, molecules or particles do not move as fast, but in gases, particles do move very, very fast because they have a lot of space to move. So when the speed of the, uh, the particles increase, they are more likely to become gas. So that's why we see that direct relationship between your temperature and vapor pressure. So with that being said, um, we are going to finish off the lesson with this very interesting question. Let's say you FaceTime your friend who lives in Colorado, um, and both of you start cooking pasta at the same time. Which one of you is going to cook pasta faster, you or your friend? So the answer is your friend who's living in Colorado is going to cook the pasta faster, and that's because higher up in the mountains as your altitude increases altitude is the distance from the sea level so as the altitude increases um, the atmospheric pressure decreases um, so as you go higher up the mountains you have less atmospheric pressure and remember how we said um, a, a little earlier that in order for something to boil your vapor pressure must be higher or equal to the atmospheric pressure so if your atmospheric pressure is very low that means you don't need a lot of pressure um, to equal the atmospheric pressure so that's why it's going to take less time um, and lower temperature um, to achieve the vapor pressure that we need for the thing to boil. Um, so that's why 
when you go higher up, things boil, uh, or when your altitude increases, things uh, boil faster. And that was it for the vapor pressure.